Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor, and you're listening to episode 125 of the Listening Time Podcast. I hope everyone's doing great. Thank you for listening, and keep up the good work with your English practice. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of you struggle to stay motivated sometimes because it doesn't feel like you're making progress, but you are. If you're practicing, you're listening, you're doing this on a regular basis, you're improving. Just trust the process and know that this takes a lot of time. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about pregnancy. And more specifically, I'm going to talk about getting prenatal care from a birth center. So I'm not just going to talk about pregnancy in general. I'm going to talk about birth centers and um, going through your pregnancy with a birth center. Most of you probably don't even know what a birth center is, and I'm going to explain that in just a bit, uh, but I'm just introducing this topic now. Uh, the title of this episode is just pregnancy, because that will be easier for people to understand, but I'm going to talk about um, going through a birth center during your pregnancy because my wife and I have a lot of experience with birth centers, and I'm sure that a lot of you will be interested in learning about birth centers. What are they? This is an alternative to uh, giving birth at a hospital. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. Before we get started, remember to sign up for my new podcast, U.S. Conversations, in each episode of that podcast, I talk to a different person, a different native speaker from a different part of the United States, and we talk about a lot of different things and have a natural conversation, and I provide the transcript for you with the definitions of new words and phrases that you might not know uh, that we use in our conversation. So if you're interested in practicing your listening with real conversations between native speakers, then make sure to sign up. The link is in the description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash US conversations. And if you want my advanced podcast episodes, if you want the episodes where I speak at normal speed, then make sure to become a Listening Time family member and you'll receive two new advanced episodes every month. The link to that is also in the description below. And of course, if you're a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker, then check out my ebook if you want to read fiction in English. Those links are down there as well. And if you like this podcast, I'd appreciate it if you could share it with anyone else you know who's learning English and please give it a five-star rating and write a review. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about pregnancy and birth centers. So before I start, I want to mention that I'm not giving any advice here. I'm not telling you what to do, and I'm not telling you that you should use a birth center. I'm just giving uh, an overall view of what a birth center is so you can learn about it. So what is a birth center? A birth center is a healthcare facility that specializes in childbirth and it is not a hospital. It's different from a traditional hospital. So it's a facility uh, that you go to uh, if you choose not to get your prenatal care um, from a hospital and you want a different experience for your prenatal care. By the way, the phrase prenatal care 
refers to the care that you get when you're pregnant before you give birth. So that's prenatal. And then postnatal is uh, everything after the birth. So uh, you can go to a birth center to get your prenatal care and you will interact with midwives at a birth center. If you don't know what a midwife is, this is a person who specializes in childbirth. Nowadays, it's common for doctors to deliver babies, but before that, it was always midwives who delivered babies. These are the people who have delivered babies for many, many years, many centuries. So midwives still exist. Uh, even hospitals in the U.S. have midwives uh, a lot of the time. So even if you give birth at a hospital, there still might be a midwife there who delivers your baby. So uh, this is still uh, a profession that people have. And if you go to a birth center, uh, you'll be taken care of by different midwives. These are the people who usually run the birth center, right? When we say that someone runs something, we're saying that they operate it, they control it, right? So birth centers are run by midwives, and these are the people that uh, help to deliver your baby and also help you through your pregnancy and even after you give birth. So these are midwives. And there are other people that sometimes work at birth centers or that might be um, friends with uh, the midwives at these birth centers and sometimes help out. Uh, for example, doulas. A doula is kind of like a birth assistant. Uh, this is a person that helps you give birth. They're like a coach and a partner and someone that helps you through this process uh, when you're giving birth. And they do many other things as well. And there are other specialists that birth centers uh, are often affiliated with, or maybe they have uh, some contacts uh, that specialize in other things. For example, lactation consultants and massage therapists and people like that. So uh, all of these types of people might work at birth centers or they might uh, work uh, in association with different birth centers. So they're not doctors usually. Um, they are midwives or doulas or whatever, uh, something other than just a medical doctor. Before we continue, let me tell you about our sponsor, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you can have farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. That means you can skip going to the grocery store and instead use HelloFresh to make home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. Many of us have really busy schedules, which makes it hard to always cook creative and exciting meals. But with HelloFresh, you can choose from over 40 recipes every week, so there's always something delicious to discover. And besides making things easier, HelloFresh can also save you money because it's actually cheaper than grocery shopping and it's 25% less expensive than ordering takeout. So that means less stress and less money you need to spend. My family has benefited from HelloFresh, especially because it makes everything so much faster. We love eating interesting and tasty dishes, but it can be hard to find the time to plan and shop for all this. That's why HelloFresh is so useful. It does the shopping and planning for you, so you can save time and still cook delicious meals. You can see why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50listening and use code 50listening for 50% 50 off plus free shipping. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com slash 50listening and use code 50listening for 50% 50 off plus free shipping. And what is the birth center like? Well, it's not like a hospital. 
<laughs> that's for sure. It's like the exact opposite of a hospital. When you go inside a birth center, it usually feels more like your home, to be honest. It's a very relaxing and soothing environment. Uh, the word soothing uh, just means relaxing. It's something that makes you feel calm and relaxed. So the environment is very soothing. Uh, it feels very comfortable. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I go to a hospital, I feel extremely uneasy. Uh, the word uneasy means that you're uncomfortable uh, with something. So I feel extremely uneasy when I'm at the hospital. It's a very cold environment. Uh, I don't like the feeling there. However, at birth centers, the environment is extremely comfortable and soothing. There are couches and beds and uh, nice decorations and uh, all kinds of stuff. And uh, these birth centers are different from hospitals in that they are much less restrictive. So at hospitals, you have to follow very strict uh, rules and procedures, and you don't have uh, a lot of freedom to choose different things that you might want. Whereas at a birth center, you choose almost everything. So uh, they ask you about how you want your birth to be, how you want this to go, and you tell them exactly what you want, and they try to replicate that uh, as much as possible. And so you can have your uh, perfect birth experience. So it's much less restrictive than giving birth at a hospital. And you also have a lot of things that can aid you in giving birth. Uh, when you aid someone, this means that you help someone. So there are many things that can aid you during the birth process when you're at a birth center. So they have things like uh, tubs of water, like a small pool of warm water. And many women love to give birth in uh, the tub in water. Uh, a lot of people like this. So you have that. You have all kinds of different tools to help you get into different positions uh, to make it easier for you. So you have a lot of things that can help you. And of course, if there are major complications that happen, uh, then you will transfer to a hospital, of course. Um, but that's mostly just for emergencies, like if you're going to need an emergency C-section, then, of course, you end up transferring to a hospital. By the way, the term C-section refers to a cesarean. So if you need a C-section, that's not done at a birth center. So if you have some type of emergency, then you'll transfer to a hospital nearby, and they'll uh, do what they need to do. But the midwives can do a lot. Uh, really, they can do most things that you would need them to do, except for emergency procedures like C-sections and things like that. But uh, in most cases, you just give birth there at the birth center, and it's very comfortable. So how do the appointments work uh, during your pregnancy at a birth center? Well, number one, uh, appointments are very comfortable. It's a very comfortable environment. Like I mentioned, uh, usually there is a couch or a bed that's really comfortable. They usually have uh, good lighting, uh, not really bright 
intense lights uh, like at a hospital. Uh, they have uh, nicer lights that make you feel more comfortable and all kinds of things that make you feel more at home. And you can bring your family often uh, to these appointments. Uh, like if you have another young child already, you can usually bring them. And of course, uh, your spouse, uh, you can all go together. It's a very nice environment when you have these appointments. And one thing that you'll notice is that these appointments are long. They're often over an hour long, whereas doctor's appointments are usually short. I'm sure most of you would agree. So these appointments are long and you don't feel rushed. You feel like you can take your time, which is really nice. And you have many appointments. So throughout your pregnancy, if you do uh, the whole program, you get your prenatal care from a birth center starting from early on in your pregnancy, you're going to have a lot of appointments uh, because the midwives really want to get to know you. They want to have a lot of time to get to know your preferences, uh, what you want for your birth, um, your likes and dislikes, uh, your fears, all of that kind of stuff. They take a lot of time to get to know you. And uh, of course, they allow you to ask questions. And it's common for the mother or the father uh, to come in with tons of questions. And the midwives always encourage you to ask all of your questions. Uh, it's really nice because sometimes when you go to a doctor's appointment, they don't really want to sit through uh, all of your questions and address every one of your concerns and uh, you feel more rushed, right? So that's not the case uh, at most birth centers. You can ask all of your questions you can uh, raise all of your concerns and they listen to you. It's very nice. I'm not saying that that never happens uh, in a hospital setting. I'm just saying that uh, at birth centers, this is the norm. Whereas uh, during doctor's appointments, uh, this isn't always done like that, of course. And at your appointments, of course, they check your vitals. Uh, this just means that they check the important signs like your blood pressure and heart rate and things like that. And sometimes they might do blood work uh, or they might take urine samples from you um, so they can see if everything's going okay with you. Uh, they can see if you need to uh, take certain supplements or whatever. And of course, uh, you also get to listen to your baby. You get to listen to their heartbeat, uh, which is really cool. Uh, you usually do that at each appointment. And some birth centers might have ultrasounds there. However, usually... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, maybe they might have a technician who uh, comes in to do ultrasounds, or you might need to go somewhere else for ultrasounds, uh, because at some birth centers, they might not have technicians who can come in and do this. So uh, you might be referred to a different doctor uh, to go do ultrasounds. So I think that just depends. So that's something that you experience as well, maybe in the birth center or outside, but uh, many people have ultrasounds during their pregnancy, of course. And there are also postnatal visits. So after you give birth, they don't just 
desert you and leave you on your own. By the way, if we say that someone deserts you, this means that they abandon you somewhere. So they don't just desert you and move on. They actually check up on you and you might have a couple postnatal visits and that's pretty typical at birth centers. And another thing is that birth centers often offer classes as part of the whole package that you buy. So uh, you might have a number of different classes uh, helping you with preparation for the birth and uh, everything surrounding that and uh, about the birth itself and about different positions that you can be in, uh, about postnatal care, all kinds of stuff. So I remember going through many classes uh, with the birth center uh, before we had my son, and we learned a ton during that time. That was really cool. So that's another thing that you can get at birth centers. And then during the actual birth, uh, birth centers uh, work a little bit differently than hospitals. Uh, so the midwives will be on call, uh, meaning that uh, you'll have their number, you'll be communicating with them around the time when you go into labor, and they'll uh, just make sure they know what's happening with you, and uh, you'll decide when it's right to drive to the birth center uh, so that you can start the birth process. And then once you're at the birth center, then you have a lot of freedom. Uh, this is a little bit different than in hospitals. So at a birth center, you can be in any position that you want. You can stand, you can walk around the room, you can lie on the bed, you can go into uh, the pool with the water, you can sit on the toilet, you can do whatever you want. And that's something that's really cool because it allows you to feel as comfortable as possible so that you're more likely to have a smooth uh, birth process. And they have a lot of these different aids, these different tools that can help you. Uh, a lot of different things that I don't even know the names of, <laughs> to be honest, so I can't really talk so much about them, but they have a lot of interesting things that help you uh, get into better positions to help with the process, and uh, it's very likely that you'll have a doula. Uh, remember this uh, birth assistant, right, who helps you through the whole process, and the doula really helps. Uh, they will uh, do everything to make you as comfortable as possible, and they'll help you relieve your pain. They do all kinds of things. They're amazing, really. And you also have the freedom to decide uh, who catches the baby. So maybe you want your husband to catch the baby. Uh, that's something that some people decide. Uh, and you can uh, really choose everything. Uh, you can decide exactly how you want it to be. Uh, and they're really good at respecting uh, your choices. So that's really cool. I didn't catch my son when he was born. Um, but, uh, I know that other fathers have done that. That's pretty cool. And, uh, another thing that's good about birth centers is, uh, when you give birth, uh, they, uh, encourage skin to skin contact immediately. So immediately when your baby is born, uh, they put the baby on your chest, you get that uh, immediate contact, that immediate bonding, 
and they also delay uh, the cord clamping usually so they don't cut the umbilical cord too soon right they allow more time to pass uh, before cutting it so that's great and nobody takes your baby away from you uh, you're never separated from your baby during this process. So I really like that aspect as well. And so overall, as you can see, uh, going through a birth center uh, for your pregnancy and your birth and um, all of this care uh, is usually for people who don't like the hospital environment, people who aren't comfortable in hospitals and people who feel like they can give birth more comfortably uh, in a place, in an environment that's more soothing, that doesn't have as many restrictions, right? Um, or for people who don't really like the practices uh, at many hospitals and people who want to make their own choices about how their birth will be. So for people like that, birth centers are great because they offer you that freedom. Uh, they offer you uh, the opportunity to kind of construct your birth plan. And of course, they offer you a really nice environment and they make it uh, easier for you to give birth let's say. So that's kind of an overall summary of birth centers. I'm sure for a lot of you, uh, this was an entirely new subject. So I hope that you learned a lot and that you might learn more uh, about birth centers if you're interested in them. Uh, but uh, even if you're not interested in them, I hope this episode was good practice for your listening. And remember to sign up for my new podcast, U.S. Conversations, if you feel like you're ready to start practicing with real conversations between native speakers. This podcast will be perfect for you because you also have the transcript with definitions of key words and phrases. So go down below and sign up. That's patreon.com slash U.S. Conversations. And if you want my advanced episodes, then make sure to become a Listening Time family member and you'll get two new advanced episodes every month. The link is also down below. And of course, the links are down below uh, to my ebook, uh, my collection of three short mystery stories for Spanish or Portuguese speakers who want to read fiction in English with a translation in either Spanish or Portuguese. So check that out if you're interested. And if you like this podcast, please give it a five-star rating and write a review and share it with anyone else you know who's learning English. All right. Thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time.